Hi, my name is Bente Ilvold and I welcome you to my home office. I'm so happy to be teaching here at the School of Brass Season 2. Thanks a lot for having me. It's a great honor. Currently, I'm the euphonium teacher at the Norwegian Academy of Music and I'm also a Shire's euphonium artist. Today I want to share some thoughts and exercises I use in my fundamental practice. I will show you how I work on three things. Building breathing technique, developing flexibility and expanding register. For me, these three things are connected. But when we practice, we tend to break things down to small details adding one and one moment until we hit a goal. But there is a fine balance here, I think. A balance between paying attention to the details and not to lose track of the whole, the total aspect of your playing. For me, brass playing is to take total control over four different things. Your breathing, both inhale and exhale, your chops or your amateur, your tongue and your fingers. And as I have gotten older, the practice efficiency has gotten more and more important to me. I therefore try to pick out or sometimes develop exercises that is like a kinder egg um, in the meaning three in one. I really love that concept because that is better use of time and it's a fact you, that you need to work specifically on the things you want to improve. And when we practice, practice, it's a lot of stuff going on at the same time and several things to focus on at the same time. So you need to practice that skill, the skill to be able to do many things at once. My best tool to track or correct myself in my practice is the sound I'm making and the tuning. Because in my opinion, you can never ever compromise on sound and intonation. That is your two most important things. Nobody will care how fast or high you can play if you sound bad or play out of tune. The exercises I will show you today builds up in a way that will give you some reality checks as we go. So you will need to work each step the correct way or you will not be able to do everything at the level it should be. It's so easy to get lazy and don't use the maximum focus and awareness when we practice. And as a result, we don't get the practice quality we want. Therefore, you need to keep your brain busy while practicing. And, and my brain is constantly full, working on really listen carefully. So, let's dig into some work. Building breathing technique. Notice the fact I used the word technique and not capacity. Your breathing capacity is what it is. What you can work on is how well you use that capacity. For those who know me uh, or have seen me, knows the fact I am low. My height is only 157 centimeters and I think that will be around 5.1 feet. That means it's a fact my lungs aren't the biggest one. So I need to have a really good breathing technique in order to play euphonium at the level I want. But the fact is I have done and do most of my breathing exercises on the instrument. First, we are going to start with an exercise I got from my teacher, Sverre Ulstrø, when I just started my studies at the Norwegian Academy of Music. The goal here is to play really loud with a consistent and relaxed sound, using all your air at the maximum, emptying yourself. 
And then try to get the best inhale as you can and still stay relaxed. I do not use much ups or amateur for anything in this exercise. The goal is to stay relaxed and get the maximum out of the vibration, aiming for a big fat sound in the entire register. I start out on the middle F and play chromatically down. And even though this exercise isn't very musical, try to stay in the flow and keep a steady pulse coming from inside your body. As you probably figure out, this exercise is a sort of overdoing exercise, meaning this is not necessary what we will do when it comes to repertoire, but it's a great way to develop your breathing and body relaxation when you're getting out of air. You sort of need to work around your instincts, because your instinct will be to create tension in your body and shops when you're getting out of air. So you need to train yourself to stay relaxed, even though you have an uncomfortable feeling in your body, but still be active in your breathing system. The next step, we're going to develop this exercise a bit, moving our fingers faster and imagine that the whales just cutting through our consistent air and making a perfect legato. Still play loud, still big and fat sound. We add in one more half step and do it on repeat several times until you are out of air. I also do this one in all my register and make sure you variate the octave and pitches so it doesn't get static on your chops. And remember your overall goal is to have a great sound and a flexible style of playing. So, this could have been your warm-up, right? If you want to save time, this is a big kinder egg. Breathing, buzz on vibration, relaxation, sound and fingers, uh, and the whole register. So, now you are ready to play, no need for some more warm-up. Uh, before we move on to the next subject, I will show you how I adapt this playing style into some etudes and how it helps me in my 
um, music playing or in my repertoire. I especially enjoy the Blasevich studies for the double B flat tuba. And for me, I don't work on these etudes with a goal of imitating the tuba because I am not a tuba and I see no reason to imitate one. But I need to make sure I'm able to play in my low register with a direct and open sound and with no difference in the sound quality no matter what intervals or registers change or how sort of narrow the note is. As you can hear, this takes a lot of air, but what you gain is this kind of air power and the ability to breathe fast and big, and that will help you a lot in your phrasing and make so much more of the repertoire a lot easier. After uh, you have done some Blasevich, you can play some scales, for example, backwards in two or three octaves just to make sure your air is moving both fast and smooth and your amateur is relaxed and open with good vibration. And the goal here is to try not to move your chops when you hit the register changes or the resistant change in your instrument. <laughs> also enjoy the Tommy Peterson bass trombone etudes. They demand so much clarity and control in the low register. And for me, this is sort of a checkpoint or a proof if I have succeeded on the exercises we have been through now. And compared to the Blasevich, I also play with musical character and phrasing in these etudes. So here is a few bars as an example. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
flexibility and building register. For me, these two things are to be considered as one topic, not two. In the meaning that if you don't play flexible in your entire register, you sort of don't have a register because you can't use it. And if you don't have a good register, you are not a flexible player. So for me, it's uh, the same thing. I will now show, show you my favorite flexibility exercise, but first we need to work out how to play them. I use the same principle as I talked about earlier. The free lip bus, trying not to control what happens inside the mouthpiece. If the lips or chops move, it's because of the air or the resistance created between you and the instrument, not because you are um, aware of your movements. Most of the vibration comes from our upper lip. Therefore, I try to lay or anchor my mouthpiece below my lower lip, like this. This is sort of where I anchor my mouthpiece, not on my upper lip. Here, and then I get, then it will never be so much pressure on my upper lip. So this is sort of my spot or contact point. I know there are different schools on this topic, but for me, this works best. So you have to figure out what suits you the best. I also <clears throat> will not focus directly on the tongue in these exercises or making vowels, specific vowels, but only try to make it as easy and natural as possible. Let your body and breathing system respond natural to the, to the pitch you're supposed to play. But that means you have to, the pitch of course need to be in your mind and in your ears. Here is the first exercise, pretty easy, but focusing on an excellent legato and a musical good sound. And if you maintain totally relaxed in your body, you will be able to notice how fast and consistent your air is moving. So, the next one is also pretty easy. We add the fifth and the octave, and I do some speed variants until I get them as fluent as I want. <laughs> So, now we are hitting the point to another reality check. What I call the middle register lip trail. Here it's important to really focus on the pitch and have the interval really clear in your mind and play slowly before speeding up. Stay totally relaxed and let the air do the job. This one it's important to be patient with because if you are getting, um, you don't have so much pa uh, patient 
uh, you will create tension in your body and it will be hard for you to really get this on a high level. The next exercise is from John Rigdon's book, How Brass Player Do It. I really enjoy that book when it comes to flexibility. It's a constant challenge. So for me, it's, and it's a really good reality check once again. Uh, we're going to use exercise number 10. And I play it as written. And then I sometimes do it with my whales halfway down. And then as written again, just to make sure my ear is moving and that I really know the pitches. Imagine this is a beautiful, beautiful melody played with a beautiful legato. <laughs> In the end of this flexibility section, I will show you a variant of a flexibility exercise. It's probably the one I practiced the most, I guess, especially when I was a student. And I think it's sort of a variant, some a bit stolen from both the Remington and Rigidon. So here it is. So, 
Before I end this session, I will show you some quick exercises I use to work on expanding my register and staying flexible while doing it. I start out on my pedal B flat playing a major seven chord, three or four octaves, depending on where I am in the register, like this. <laughs> I also sometimes challenge myself to play a perfect fourth or a perfect fifth as high as I can. This also helps to develop your control over these important intervals and this will be a huge advantage when it comes to intonation. To gain really high notes easily, I have found it efficient to use easy stepwise melody movements played in octaves. This helps keeping your brain busy because you're only focusing on the melody and that sort of, then you don't try to control so much of your, um, your body system that you use when you're playing. It will only be natural. So. Just uh, some things you need to be aware of when you're doing this exercise. Play with a stable pulse. Try not to breathe before the high octave. Add in more octaves downwards as you go. As higher you go, as lower you should go to compensate and get your chops to work in all the register at the same time. Don't ever force the sound. If the high notes doesn't speak or respond, don't push it. Just continue the exercise. Focus on the flow that's more important than the pitch. The pitch will come eventually. And most important, start in a place where you're comfortable. Don't start at your limit at once. Play at least two or three octaves before you hit your limit. <laughs> I also adapt this octave perspective into the Arban book and use it in the first studies section. Um, I then try to play this exercise in three octaves and make sure you really know it and have the pitches clear in your mind. Then imagine that all the pitches are sort of in a line Imagine the melody going like a horizontal line, not moving like this and try to just have this even focus and aim for the note in your head. Then play and change octaves for each bar like this. And if you're doing this right and sort of have build up everything stepwise that I've been talking about and showed you now, if you check with your tuner, this tuning in this Arban study should be rather good. 
Uh, because if you stay relaxed in your shops and let the air and instrument work for you, don't force the note or pitches, um, then I think our natural way of, uh, of, of doing the tuning is pretty good for us that's our musician and used to listening and being music all the time. <laughs> Just a quick summary of this masterclass. Remember to stay relaxed in your body and your shops, but be active in your breathing system. Push your limits, but stay relaxed at the same time. This is a paradox and this is to really get this. I think it's important. Don't do so much with your shops inside the mouthpiece. Let it move and vibrate naturally. Know the pitches in your head. Aim for them with your mind and ears, not your chops. Think and be musical. That means be natural in your approach to playing your instruments. Our main goal is to make this thing sort of a part of our body. Be your instrument. Thanks for listening and good luck.